to the 11th video in my series of You Can Play This. For this episode, I'm on a journey investigating the complex Italian musical form for the lute, the Ricciacare. Just before I dive in, this happens to be a very special video as I've had the wonderful opportunity to collaborate with Bradford Verner, a Canadian-born classical guitarist behind the inspiring YouTube channel This Is Classical Guitar which features beautiful performances, lessons and an extensive music catalogue created by Brad called the Werner Guitar Editions, which includes graded music and progressive lesson material. He and I had a fantastic conversation about lutes and guitars and shared our thoughts on the piece I'm exploring here. If you'd like to check out our conversation, the link is in the description box below. So the piece I've chosen for this episode is called Ricciacata Bella, or Beautiful Fantasia. It can be found in the Siena Lute Book, a personal anthology copied by a single hand over a short period of time, between 1580 and 1590. The owner or scribe can't be verified for sure, but it is thought to have been put together by a professional lute player, with access to good quality copies of works that span three generations of lute composers, making this book a central collection for Italian lute music in the 16th century. The manuscript is believed to have been copied in the Tuscan region, hence the title. It's such an important source because it not only reflects the style and output of the Italian lute repertoire of this genre, but it's one of the most important sources of music for Francesco da Milano. Such was the profound popularity of da Milano's works that his legacy was still reverberating 50 years after his death. Other composers that feature in the manuscript are Fabrico Dentice, Giulio and Gian Antonio Severino, Perino Fiorentino and Alberto de Ripa. But there are many question marks over a number of the pieces in the book in terms of authorship. Ricciacata Bella is one of these. I'm fascinated with the music from this genre. For me, it throws up so many questions. It represents a fusion of two worlds, the oral improvisation tradition pre-1500 and the printed form. One of my many questions is, how is this music composed? Is it improvisation that just happens to have been documented? Is it pre-planning? Is it experience and knowledge? Is it experimental or even accidental? This fascinates me. My gut feeling is that it's all of these things and more. So what exactly is a ricicare? The earliest use of the term can be found in a 1507 printed book of lute tablature by Francesco Spinacino. The word ricicare, as I understand it, derives from the Italian word cercare, to search for or to seek out. In musical terms, this implies a seeking out of melodies, modes, sounds, colours, ranges, chordal textures and dissonance. The ricicare is exploratory in style. There are no set rules or musical structure. It allows for experimentation. It has an improvisatory treatment of the musical material. The sound world of the Ricciacata Bella is modal and indeed the pieces in the Siena Lute book from folio 1 to 34 are subdivided into modes. Ricciacata Bella has a preludial opening, a thin texture, which hints to another important Italian musical form, the tasta de cord, the testing of the strings. This was a very short piece exploring ranges, colours and chord sonority in an experimental way. Ricciacata Bella embodies both the preludial and the tasta de cord elements. I believe this piece is a wonderful example of contrapunto alla mente, an Italian term translated counterpoint of the mind, where music was semi-improvised, but it also had a cohesive order, such as single note runs, parallel tenths and sixths, rising and falling sequences, and the use of modes, all of which drew from the vocal tradition of improvising over a cantus firmus. I shall be touching on more of these aspects in my top loop web tips in the second half of this video. There is no doubt that this is a very beautiful and unique piece for understanding the style of the lute composers of the Italian Cinquecento, and as a result it's a blank canvas for the performer in terms of interpretation.
Let me know your thoughts. Send me your comments below. You can download a unique copy of this music with my personal annotations by following the link in the description box. Copies in French and Italian tablature are also available. So here it is, Ricciacata Bella. Don't forget to check out my top Loop Web tips after this. <laughs> Here are a couple of top tips from Loop Web. The first five bars are a classic example of a preludial opening with the use of the Dorian mode in a transitory pitch, in this case starting on a G. It opens with a very simple ascending scale. The colour note that makes it unusual is the E natural in the first bar. then descends and the listener is thrown off course in terms of a tonal centre by the use of an E flat. This effect contributes to an atmosphere of exploration and unpredictability. This descending scale is in fact a relative mode of the Dorian called the Hyperdorian. To be honest it doesn't really matter if you can put a technical name to these things what really matters is that you, as a player, have heard this, you have noticed it, and you have absorbed it. As a result, you are able to bring out this magical quality to your listener. Immediately in the end of bar 5 and into bar 6 and 7, we encounter intervals of sixths and tenths, with single notes interspersed between these two part chords. Again, marking this out to be uh, an example of contrapunto alimenti. that the first of these chords falls on the last beat of the fifth bar is a trait of this unpredictable language. No rules, remember? single note runs give this piece that embryonic air of exploration. It's important to seamlessly flow from the chordal sections into these moments. This is where the use of P and I is important, an ancient remnant of the use of the quill. Make sure you clearly define your downward stroke with the upward index to give the piece that all-important rhythmical energy. Download that score, the link is below. 
If you are a guitarist and you have enjoyed watching this video, you too can play this piece, remembering to tune the third string down a semitone to an F sharp. Put a capo on the third fret and you'll be at the same pitch as a lute in G. Don't forget to check out that collaboration video with Brad Verner. The link's below. Many thanks to everyone for your kind words and encouragement for my channel and for the videos. It really does mean a lot. Don't forget to subscribe and happy loop playing.